Good morning again. It is 6-11, and uh, we're into the Word. Hope you have a great day. I'm looking forward to a great weekend. Remember, this is Mother's Day weekend, and uh, we will uh, obviously be recognizing uh, our mothers, uh, those uh, present, those past, those that uh, have had a great influence upon our lives, and I hope you will do the same. Uh, Sunday morning at 1030 uh, we'll still be streaming our services through eWorship off of our website. But this coming Sunday, we'll be doing a, special, a couple of special things uh, just regarding and for our mothers. So uh, please uh, tune in then uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, I hope you're also taking uh, advantage, if possible, to a number of other venues that we are doing uh, through media. Uh, we've obviously doing the 611, uh, Monday through Friday on the mornings. Um, Tim, our youth director is doing the reading of Proverbs every night, um, going through a proverb every night. He does the Wednesday night Bible studies for now. I'm leading in, um, praying for our country, the 714 on Wednesday night. Um, you can join us there. Uh, we've been able to put up some youth videos. Uh, we had a clown with uh, uh, balloons and doing that kind of stuff. And then we had our own brother C from our music group uh, do something for kids as well. So uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of places, a lot of things going on that we hope will be a blessing to you until we can officially open up the doors. Uh, we do see that door cracking open. So uh, stay tuned. We'll have more information for you. Let's get into our study as we're wrapping up today, uh, the book of Noah, or not the book of Noah. I don't know why I keep saying that. Noah. We are looking at the character of Noah a, as found in Genesis. And uh, we're going to kind of wrap it up. That we could, we could go a lot longer just studying the life of Noah and even some of the intricacies of the flood. But I, I feel it's important that we kind of keep things rolling. We get the gist of where he is and what he's done. And let's go look at another character. So next week, God willing, we'll be looking at Priscilla and Aquila and um, and take uh, that week to just look at this fine couple as they serve God wherever they are. Now, with Noah, we went back and we looked at Genesis chapter number 6. Remember, he's in a culture, a mindset that is against God. He himself has a mind for God. Okay, and it, it's going to be contrary one to the other. We we looked at uh, how bad it was by actually looking in Matthew chapter number 24, and as it was in the days of Noah. And then we took a sidestep and looked at the prophecies regarding Matthew 24. Now we're just looking at the character of, of Noah, and I've selected Psalm 37, which is a psalm of David, but it's not about David specifically. It's about any individual who wants to, to live and be like Noah or David or Daniel or Esther or any other of the great stories of individuals in the scriptures. And we see this continual theme over through this psalm about inheritance, God's inheritance, passing it along, bringing it forward, that kind of concept. And so let's get into wrapping it up today as we continue to look at the verse in verse 37 of Psalm 37 uh, that talks about the perfect man, okay, the perfect man. Psalm 37, verse 37, mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for he, the end of that man is peace. And then notice the conjunction, but. Never miss these things, these links, like on a train. They link, you, many of us remember uh, uh, the old, the old uh, cartoon series back in the 70s that would just pop up on ABC, you know, conjunction, junction, what's your function, right? And we do these sort of things. We remember these little tidbits. Well, this is, this is a connector. And in, in, the, in that very video, they would have trains and they would connect. And we ought not miss those connectors. We, I know many of us, we scringed, we, we didn't like grammar. But believe me, the English language and understanding the Bible is going to be dependent on grammar, and when we have that conjunction, don't just skip by it. There's a connector. There's a comparison going on. 
Okay, so we have the perfect man, the upright man. He's going to have a place of peace. Then we have this word, but, but the transgressor, but the wicked. Well, what is it that happens to them? Let's look again. But the transgressor shall be, ooh, destroyed. And the wicked shall be cut off. And then we have another conjunction. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them. And don't forget that last phrase. Because they trust in him. We have this again, as you see me say over and over again. We have these if-then clauses. These if-then clauses. If I trust in him, I am guaranteed deliverance. Okay? If I trust in him, I am guaranteed deliverance. Okay? So let's examine this a little bit. We again are... Uh, the emphasis, and I'll continue to remind us, is not just to come away with saying, oh, that was really good. That was a that was a warm, fuzzy feeling. I'm really glad I joined in today. I hope that you come away with um, learning some of the the practices of study, okay? Not just reading, study, all right? Uh, the study of God's Word. And so we are taking this word perfect, which means to be complete, okay? And You've heard me use the illustration, a kindergartner who is writing may struggle with his alphabet, but as he continues to work it, he eventually masters it at a kindergarten level. In other words, for the kindergarten, he has it perfected. But if I write like a kindergartner at my age, I it may be speculative whether I'm perfect in my writing, correct? Because... I'm older, I'm more advanced, I've practiced it more, I should have better handwriting than a kindergartner. So handwriting is is sometimes subjective to in this area of perfection because we, we based on where you're at and what's going on. So when I come to the idea of perfection, it's the idea of I could not have done it any better. I could not have done it any better. And th be careful of this because we have the tendency to compare ourselves with someone else and say, oh, I'm not like them. Yeah, but are you like what God intended you to be? That's the most important thing is having peace. Here we go. Peace with who I am in Christ at the juncture I'm at. Okay? We all have different levels of giftedness and we all have different years of experience. But am I maximizing and doing what God had me to do in the place I'm at with what he's given me. Just like the story of the talents. Some have five, some have two, some have one. What am I doing with what, what God has given me? Okay, so let's real quickly go through some of this. I find interesting in our study that the, the, per, the end of the perfect man is peace. So you and I both have this idea. If I'm walking in peace, peace with God and and pretty much peace with others, peace with self, I'm probably in a state of perfection there. I'm in a place of wholeness and completeness, okay? Now, the Bible tells me, according to Psalm 37, King David says, mark that individual. Mark the person who is in per this place. Interestingly enough, this word means to hedge about. Even the etymology of the word means to border or boundary. Notice the parentheses. This is exactly what we're talking about. When I put a parentheses about something, I have marked it. I have marked it. I have put a boundary. Now, this word also is defined as to protect, to look to, to observe, to wait for. We have a tendency to see problems, and we start to focus in on the problem. Could I just encourage us today and maybe always? How about we focus in on the peace? Number one, let's look at the peace of God that passes all understanding. Number two, let's look at the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Then we can look at people who seem to have come to the place of perfection and have peace and model or mark or boundary things about them and say, you know what? I want to emulate that. I want to go in that direction rather than go the other direction. Okay, let's move on. 
we talked about the conjunctions, but we've already talked in brief that the transgressor, the transgressor, the one who breaks away from just authority or the wicked shall be destroyed or cut off. Then we have this, but again shows up, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. And this one, this means that that person is going to be rescued. The word salvation here is rescued or deliverance. They're, they're going to have strength in time of trouble. They're going to have help and deliver another type of deliver from God. And this word deliver means to be carried away from the wicked, carried away to safety. And then they're going to be saved. And this word brings about the idea that here, not only does God deliver me and carry me away, but now he defends and even avenges me against the wicked. Now, sometimes we read these things in the scriptures and we make this assumption that must have been for David or that was just for Noah. No, the Psalms and, and verses like this apply to every generation. If I'm living righteously before God, number one, we should know that. There should be a peace with God that indicates I'm okay. God's okay with me. We get troubled in our mind and in our heart. Remember, our heart generates things and it causes my mind to go into imaginations. And that's where I get this troublingness, troubleness. God doesn't want that for us. Take a step back. Go to the God of peace. Go to the scriptures. Review it. If I have peace after that time, everything's all right with God and I. He's got it. He's got it totally delivered. No problem. What do you think Noah was feeling when he started to see the, the storm clouds come in? When the torrential rain started? When eventually the flood comes rolling down through the valleys? And, and things are starting. Do you, what do you think? Well, I'm sure he was shocked at what he saw. But I also believe he trusted God with the plan. We need to trust God with his plan. Now, we ended it with this thought. Because they trust in him. Let's just talk about a couple final things with Noah as we wrap up. And I've just entitled this Further Note. Further Note. When we go to Genesis chapter number 8, verse 21. First thing Noah does when he comes off is builds an altar. And I believe that is a burnt sacrifice. There are two things from this. Number one, anytime. Anytime that we see God do something in an amazing fashion, it would be a good time to just stop what we're doing and praise him. Build an altar. Worship him. Right? Just take the time. You know, you get an unexpected check in the mail. <laughs> Worship God. You get uh, delivered from a terrible uh, car accident. Worship God. You hear news that is um, a blessing. Worship God. But then there's some very bad things that happen. Could I encourage you? Worship God. Build an altar, and as Noah does, he puts a sacrifice on that altar. I believe that that sacrifice is what we call the burnt sacrifice. It is, in essence, me putting myself on that altar and saying, not my will, but thine be done. God, you do whatever you have to. We are in your hands. There we have this principle of trusting him, all right? And then notice what happens then, and I don't have time to go to the text because we're running out of time, but you can read it. When you read from Genesis 8.21, go to Genesis 9.1 and notice what happens from there. The if-then clauses. So he builds an altar, he worships, he says, not my will, but thine be done. I'm yours, God. And then God comes back and says, you're gonna be blessed. I'm going to bless you, Noah, and your sons. Your families are going to be blessed hereafter. He says, I want you to go forth and be fruitful. I want you to go forth and multiply. I want you to go forth and replenish. You're going to have dominion. Even though the word dominion is not mentioned there, notice what he says. They're going to be, they're, the creation is going to fear you. And this isn't reverence fear. This is a fear of dread. When you come walking down the street, they're going to be really concerned about you. So Noah and God have a covenant, and he says it's to you and to your seed after you. Remember the other day I said to you, 
Read the last verse of Psalm 23. Psalm 23, and that's where we're going to close this study. Notice this. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. You recall this. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Here we go. Surely goodness and mercy shall go with me, be ahead of me. No, follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There are two things with that word follow. One, the word follow means to pursue. It means it's coming after me. It's coming for me, right? It's, it's assured. God is wanting to bless, and he's bringing blessing. But the second part of that word follow, as we understand it in the English, is it's behind me. It's in my wake. Believer, Christian, follower of God, child of God, what we do today, what we endure today, doing righteously, is going to have an effect for those that follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And when I come down to the end of my life, Everything I do must be in my mind, must be for those that follow me, specifically my children. Now, I know we're out of time, but don't ever forget this. Noah did what was right. His son Shem and Japheth did what was right. Ham does not eventually. And he, Ham, has a generation of children that go astray. The responsibility for our children following God is first with us and teaching them the way. After that, it's up to them to go in that way and do the same thing. Ham chose not to do as his father Noah did, and that curses on him and his, his children. Shem and Japheth did follow Noah and did do as their father had instructed them, and the blessing fell to them after him. Let's be a people who are working for the inheritance, for the things that are to come, for those that are behind. Let's be faithful as Noah was. He was a man whose steps were ordered by the Lord. He put the law of God in his heart. He was a perfect man in peace. And the blessing comes behind. Not always right here where I'm at. Though I am blessed, I want to see my children and my children's children blessed even more. Go with God. Let God go with you. And I'm going to add one thing here today. Because he's worth it. See you later.